Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live from E3, recorded June 14th, 2010, the Microsoft Media Event. Twit's live coverage of E3 is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync, featuring true hands free calling, turn by turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more details, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Live from Los Angeles, California, it's time for E3 2010, the big gaming expo. Leo Laporte here. Ryan Brushwood is also with us. We're covering E3, brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync. Sync features true hands-free calling, turn-by-turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Sync is available exclusively at Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more details, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. We thank Ford for uh, bringing us to E3 here in Los Angeles. We're right outside the Wiltern Theater. If you come with me, Eric... We're going to see the outside of where Microsoft's big Project Natal event is happening. They're calling it their Xbox 360 media briefing. So we'll hear about Connect, which is the new Project Natal uh, name. That, of course, is the hands-free camera that goes in front of your Xbox 360 and your TV. We had the demo earlier today uh, that lets you play games by jumping around, moving around. It's really quite impressive. Uh, we'll also find out about new games. I saw the Bungie team going in a little earlier. There's a new Halo game, I think Halo Realms. Uh, Microsoft will be sure to announce that. You know, as usual, at events like this, they don't show the whole game. They show clips from the game because these games are still a work in progress. In fact, Kinect is not going to come out till November, which means, uh, you know, even these Kinect games are still uh, fairly early on. So let's cross the street here. We can go up to the Wiltern. This is the theater right here. We're not going to go inside. We're not going to be able to stream live. But uh, once the event begins in about 20 minutes, uh, we'll send it back to the studio. Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane are there in the studio. We'll be able to stream the press conference live with their commentary. And then we'll come back after the press conference and uh, try to get some people as they come out and talk about some of the different things Microsoft talks about today. Expected to see a new Xbox 360 form factor, too, the Xbox Slim. Um, I don't know what else we'll see. Probably uh, that's it. The Xbox Slim, uh, Connect, and uh, a few new games. They're calling this E310 Xbox 360 Jump In. We just passed the VIP entrance and the valet parking for the VIPs. Maybe if we can, we'll talk to a few people as we uh, work the line here. Did you want that to be the start of the podcast, too? Yeah. No, I'm Brian. Sorry, I was trying to sit in you. The recording was taking a while to go. So oh, okay. It wasn't rolling yet? All right. We're broadcasting this live via a, a great wireless technology from LiveU that's using six different 3G wireless cards bonded together to give us a pretty high-quality stream, as you can see. Eric Lanigan's on the camera. He's got a steady cam set up on his, on his shoulders. Here are people going in into the Wiltern Theater. Here comes Brian Brushwood. So let's get his uh, microphone. So, Brian, you couldn't get in, huh? Uh, yeah, they're actually at capacity. Uh, proper scamming technique at this point is you've got to wait for the right moment to strike. So what you're saying is once everybody's in, the security goes home. I'm saying, um, yes, that's pretty much what I'm saying, <laughs> as a matter of fact. What is this? Everybody Media briefing wait list. Wait list. That's yeah, pathetic. That's, uh... that's the lowest. Wait a minute. There's Natalie Del Conte. Let's go say hi to her belly bump. She's got a baby bump. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Natalie. Natalie Del Conte, how are you? Oh, my God, it's Clayton Morris, too. Look at this. What an unlikely pair. How are you? Doing well, doing well. We're, we're doing laps around here, trying to go from one entrance to the next, but that's how it always works. Clayton Morris from Fox & Friends. You're a big gamer, aren't you? I'm a big gamer. I can't wait to wear the uh, event last night. Star Wars. Star Wars with uh, Microsoft Connect. 
So your whole body is a lightsaber? It's been, that's like a dream come true. Doesn't that look cool? Yeah, I will never leave the house again. But really, Natalie, was that not a weird event, Natalie Del Conning from CNET and CBS? It was odd. I actually just posted a blog on CNET. Um, if you go to e3.cnet.com, that's where we're covering it, about how I think Microsoft should sell sports bras with this because women are... You mean light up sports bras? Well, no, not necessarily bioluminescent sports bras, but just you got to gear up for this. this oh, jumping around. Jumping around. Becky Worley and I were jumping around this morning at 5.30 a.m. playing yeah. with it. Yeah. Did you lose a lot of weight? Uh, I did. You, can, you work up quite a sweat doing this. Yeah, you will, see, that's the thing. You'll never have to leave the house again. You could literally lose all your weight. You could uh, jump on Facebook. Well, Natalie yeah. looks like she's gaining weight. weight. Very easily. <laughs> this weight's, yeah. Weight. Now, Becky, Becky was saying this is for women. This is, oh, we're going to get out of the way here. Come on. You guys want to go in, don't you? Go ahead. Well, yeah, I'm getting the runaround about my badge, so. Oh, you're not, they're not going to let CBS in? I don't know. I don't know. I have to throw my weight They're not going to let Fox yeah. in? I hope we'll be able to get in here. Oh, so exactly. these are like the refugees. Well, stand with us, but they wouldn't let Schwood in either. Do I have to drink his snot again? That's right. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. Yeah, from South by Southwest, what, a year and a half ago now already, yeah. I drank um, some of his bodily fluid. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. You didn't watch it, obviously. But... And obviously you haven't been studying because I don't think that's how you get that's pregnant. That's how that works. I don't think so. I haven't figured out how that Is works. Is it Schwood's baby? I think with snot, it takes an extra nine I'd months. Go on the record right now and deny any affiliation whatsoever with the offspring of Natalie. <laughs> I don't blame it. Well, right. so what are you looking forward to? Anything interesting besides what we've already seen connect? Um, besides that, there are a couple of game titles I'm looking forward to seeing. I like the trailers. Even though I'm not really a hardcore gamer, it's fun to watch and just know what's, what's what and what's taking up people's time. I'm interested in that Evil Mickey one. Evil Mickey. Little Big Planet too. I want to see. Uh, I love Little Big Planet, but you know the kids. My kids won't play it because they say it's a baby game. Is it? I love it. It's a little weird. I mean, it's a little off. Kind of like. I think any any uh, character that's made out of wool is exciting for me. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. It's a weird velvet fetish. Yeah. 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 Cloth. That's great. Yeah. So, what are you looking forward to, Clayton? I would. I want to see. Uh, I want to see Gears of War. I want to see Gears of War. I mean, that's all these sequels, right? It's like I want to get excited about something that's not a sequel for once. But every year, they know they can crank out these two and three sequels. Uh, what, that's what, what kind of bothers me about the gaming, uh, in, in general, about the gaming uh, development community is they don't seem to really want to innovate. That's why I liked a lot Little Big Planet because it was so different. Yeah. I had high hopes for Spore because it was going to be so different. Um, but really, it's safer to go with Gears of War 3 or Metal Gear Solid or Halo Realms. It's easier. Well, this is Hollywood. That's where you remake everything. That's You just go for a blockbuster. All right. Have a great time. I hope you get in. Absolutely. Nice right. to see you guys. See you guys. Clayton Morris, Natalie Del Conte. So here's what I thought was interesting. You were talking about sequels. And the weird thing about video games is video games are one of the few places where sequels tend to be better than the original because you have another generation of programming. You have increased uh, you know, graphics quality. And a lot of times they've ironed out some of the problems with gameplay early on. So actually, whereas when it comes to summer movies, I get annoyed at sequels. For video games, I actually look forward to it. Well, think about a perfect example is Grand Theft Auto, which started as a top-down kind of two dimensional 2D, yeah. and has become you know this amazing universe, all because the technology has improved. The so franchise much. as we know it today started with Grand Theft Auto 3, and as, and indeed the same thing just happened with Fallout. Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 were isometric, uh, third-person, two-dimensional, and uh, the. Uh, uh, the moment Fallout 3 came, it totally blew everything away. And that's one of the things I'm most excited about is uh, Fallout New Vegas, yeah. which uh, looks really amazing. I loved amazing. Fallout. That was such a great game, and I really look forward to playing it again. I think Jeff Kanata from Totally Rad Show really nailed it. You know, uh, Origin Systems, uh, now default, Origin, or, right. or I guess folded into to EA, used to have the slogan, We Create Worlds. Right. And, they really created this real space. It was a place that lived in your imagination with people who lived and died and had hopes and dreams, and it was so dark and so immersive. It really, uh, one of my all-time favorite games. It's one of the reasons I really am enjoying the Bioshock franchise, because yes. it's original, it's different, and it's a real world that you kind of get into, and the history of it is fascinating. I, lo I really loved, and I, I don't think they're gonna make any more Oddworld games, but I really loved those as well. That was a neat Same aesthetic idea. for it, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I think what makes both Bioshock and Fallout work is this fusion with the saccharine sweet uh, positivity of the, the new atomic age and all right, the, you right. know, the super and, happy. And, and how dystopian it turned oh, out to be. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, this soul-crushing radioactive <laughs> yeah, wasteland. Exactly. And the fact that you walk around, you know, in the radio stations, to be honest, uh, one of my favorite albums to listen to is the Fallout 3 soundtrack because it's all this sickly sweet music that if you listen closely, 
has almost dark undertones in it, and uh, I'm excited to experience that all over again with New Vegas. Well, I'm sorry you didn't get to go in, but you know we are going to be able to oh, stream don't you worry. all I've this got stuff. Plans and I plans. have the TwitPad application, so you and I can stand out here like poor the poor orphans that we are <laughs> watching on a stream on a on an iPad out front. How do you compare this? This is the first time I've been at an event like this to an Apple event. You know, that's the first thing that leaps to mind. I've never been to an Apple event, so you'd be the one to tell me what, what the difference is. First of all, I guess we tend to have badges when we, when we go to, to Apple events. We can events. get in. Yeah. yeah, for those of you guys just tuning in, I actually, the moment my plane touched down, I hopped in a car, I drove straight here, didn't have a chance to get my badges at the at, at, uh, We don't have ours either, yeah. Yeah. And I apologize for not uh, arranging ahead of time to get you in, but the truth is, I like standing out front and not being able to get in. I think it's kind of fun, and we're going to grab people as they come out. We are going to, you're not going to miss the press conference. In fact, you're going to have a better seat than we do because we're going to be able to stream that live for you, so you'll be able to watch it. Tom Merritt and, uh, sorry, it's so noisy here. I guess we must be like in L.A. or something. <laughs> it's almost as though we're in a busy that's downtown the, urban that's environment. The difference. That's that. the difference between San Francisco and L.A. and it's an Apple and Microsoft. One thing I noticed about Microsoft events, they seem to be bigger productions. There's a lot more security. There's a lot more security theater. They've hired big, ugly goons. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> not you. Uh, they've hired big, ugly <laughs> goons. Wearing matching Xbox ties, as yeah, a matter of fact. Yeah. And I was, uh, somebody, people were saying that their event last night, the launch of Kinetic, uh, of Connect with uh, the Cirque du Soleil. Uh, the, the rumor I heard floating around is that they blew so much of their budget on that that they wanted to downscale the actual press event. That was so over the top. I didn't. I wasn't there. We were invited, but we flew in late, and I, we couldn't make it to it. But I talked to Becky and a few others. We just talked to Natalie about it. She should see her post. There's a hysterical post on Crunch Gear about it, too. It sounds like it was incomprehensible. They made everybody put on white ponchos yes, and yes, yes. shoulders that lit up in the dark. <laughs> it sounded like, um, I don't know, some kind of uh, cult rally or something. People were asking if they'd walked in. Yeah. Oh, is that what? Hey, there we go. Oh, we don't have two channels. Is there something you can do about that? All right. Nah, we'll figure it out. I think what happens is when it, we, we send two channels, but when it gets back to the studio, uh, they're only hearing one side of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, regardless, right. I'll just project. Well, so everything that he just said, could you repeat that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. The world is great. Yay, Microsoft. That's too bad because you said some really good I stuff. Oh, dude. It's like that's why I was being poignant and, and blowing people's minds, and none of it went on. Brilliant. Man, actually, we should make it even more brilliant than it really was, because people will never know, will they? No, we have it all on tape, so you'll hear it. Uh, you'll hear the people watching the replay are saying, wait a minute, I hear everything. So the folks who are actually here, I'm checking in with them. Obviously, it sounds like we're running a little bit late, but I've been assured that we are starting exactly at 1031 on the dot. And the fact that he said 1031 tells me that perhaps he knows exactly what he's talking They're about. They're notorious for that. Last year was 1025. Oh, was it really? Yeah, there's something about this. I guess they really, they don't, hey, they don't really want to... Uh, you know, uh, to have that, I guess Apple begins pretty much on time, but there are other events which shall remain nameless. While we were hanging out uh, back in the registration area, uh, Peter Molyneux walked, uh, walked right by, and he was actually hobnobbing. It seemed like he knew a lot of the, the press folks and was meeting with them. But uh, I'd be curious to see what he's presenting. I guess he did... Um, Who's he with? Uh, well, uh, I don't know if he's still with Lionhead, but I'm sure it's... Uh, he, he did Fable, and, uh, and I'm sure this will be, uh, what is it, Fable 3 that they're up to now? So uh, uh, excited to see that as well. Yeah, I, as I mentioned, I saw the Bungie people walking by. I think there'll be a lot of trailers from a lot of new games. I mean, that's what they're talking about. But really, what they're talking about is Christmas. They're talking about the holiday buying season at this point. You know, it's amazing how far out these announcements come. I mean, even even Natal Now Connect uh, was, was demoed last year, but we're still not going to see the product until holiday of this year. Uh, I, it's one of those things where you want to build up the hype, but you got to be worried about about overdoing it, and then you get that that Duke Nukem Forever syndrome, where you've been promising it for so long and nothing ever happens. I wonder if we'll see Duke Nukem Forever here at the show. Do you know what? It would not surprise me. You know, my brother worked uh, was part of the team. I heard that. And at the end, yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. So I've been hitting him up for all the inside gossip. Didn't they take the assets with them? Uh, yeah. From what I heard, um, and actually I don't know what I can and can't say, but I've heard that there's been some shuffling with the IP, and that and that somebody owns the franchise now. I, I think there was an article that just talked about. Uh, uh, some resolution of a lawsuit. Pending. The game that will not die. <laughs> it's Duke Nukem. Come on. Yeah, you can't kill Duke Nukem. With the day he dies, adventure dies. <laughs> well, I don't know uh, how much more we can say. I mean, everybody has gone inside. We're going to still, you guys should still try to get inside. Uh, yeah, I, 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 if I was a betting man, and I am, I, I would bet that we'll be, I'll be able to work something out. Yeah. 
Sure. So uh, our intrepid producer, Lisa Kensel, is going to now try to get us in. This should be interesting. You know, this is uh, one of the things that I did in my scam, scam your way into anything lecture was I talked about it's important that you have the trappings of authority, that you look like you belong. And it doesn't even matter if you don't have a badge. As long as you march like you got a purpose, a lot of times they'll let you in. I love these guys. They're riding uh, the Electroglides, the Harleys, the police, the police versions, or their Kawasaki's. And they look, for all intents and purposes, like law enforcement. But if you look really closely, they're the Motorcade Escort Brigade. Are you kidding me? I didn't even, I was totally fooled. Talk about the trappings of authority, right? No guns, that's the giveaway. That's hilarious. Yeah, no, they definitely do, they definitely do look uh, look real. I think it's more Microsoft Theater. I have to say, uh, there, it is, that's where I see the biggest difference between this and an Apple event. Apple is a little more Northern California cool. This is a little more Hollywood. Hollywood, definitely, definitely Hollywood. But uh, you know, that's, that's part of the growth of video games. Vi video games has always been kind of the bastard stepchild of entertainment that's been associated with teenage boys. And uh, I, I can understand why people would want to go out of their way to try to gussy up something like this and make it uh, seem a little more legitimate. Well, really, if you think about it, we were talking uh, earlier about one of the reasons that we don't do a lot of gaming coverage on Twit. You know, I think our audience, and certainly I, am interested in technology. That's not what gaming is about, really. Uh, yeah, yes and it's no. Storytelling. I mean, uh, every time a new console comes out, we obsess over There's some every there. number. And but every... how often does that happen? Well, you know, where, this is one of the interesting things, is every time there's, uh, gaming goes in cycles, right? You've got the, whenever a new console comes out, a new generation, everybody's like, PC gaming's dead, console's for the win, or whatever. But now, we're at a point where I believe the Xbox is four generations behind the video cards you can get for a, for a PC, and uh, it's starting to, I think it's starting to show its age relative to some of the, to me, the exciting place to be right now in gaming is in high-end PC gaming. I think that's always been the case. The problem is that Microsoft hasn't yet made back their R&D budget for the Xbox, and I don't think they ever will. Yeah, the first Xbox, I believe, lost a billion dollars. Is that correct? Uh, I've, I've, they're way in the hole. Yeah, well, and, and who knows what they're, I, I guess, I guess, that's for them to know how much money they're making back on the software, uh, but what a weird business where you sell the hardware at a massive loss just to make it back on the software. Not to mention the R&D costs, which is one of the reasons you're not going to see revision after revision after revision of these consoles. You're, I don't see a, they're not going to announce Xbox 460 here. No, uh, for, what, 460, I like that. Although I- 420, how about that? A, a <laughs> it runs a little bit slower. It's than just a little more relaxed. <laughs> a story broke last night, there was apparently some ads in Italy that showed a slimmer version of the Xbox, and it was question whether or not that was a fake leak or the real thing. I suspect we'll see that. Yeah, there was, so my question is, will I still have the red ring of death we know and love? That's, that's true. Uh, the uh, Boy, what a bummer. Somebody, somebody pointed out, and you know, somebody in one article I read, I wish I could remember who it was that came up with this, pointed out that the, re the big reason to redesign the look of the Xbox is so we don't associate it with the red ring of death right. because it's become synonymous and people are like, well, do you have one of the bad ones? And you look, you're like, well, I don't know. It looks like all the- They all look the same. Right, but now, but now if they have a redesign, if it's a slimmer one, then you can know with certainty, oh no, I got one of the good ones that will never get the red ring of death. All the Kinect demos we saw today uh, and last night are, were on the original Xbox 360, the, the, the green and beige. Um, what, it's, they must have some way of preventing those from red ringing, because that would have been pretty embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, to put it mildly, yes. You're live on ABC and it's dead. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm sure they, uh, I know they fixed some things. When, I, when mine got the red ring of death, they were very good about replacing it. One thing I noticed about the replacement unit is that the fan runs nonstop, continuously. So I wonder if it's the kind of deal where they just crank it up so that they keep it cool all the time. But uh, one of the things I'm curious to see is the price point for Connect. We're still waiting to find out about. It's got to be under 200. What do you think? Uh, well, the, the rumor was 150. That's about what I'd expect. But for, yeah, uh, uh, I, would, I would also guess that you would get a discount if you bought it with, the, I would imagine there'd be some kind of bundle. Where you and probably some it. games bundled into the Connect, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Like we. Uh, yes, yes. Although uh, one of the nice things is Xbox Live has the best marketplace for online. I mean, that's when Xbox is synonymous with online. They, they were the, the first to really own that space in the current generation of consoles. They've done very well with that. And one of the nice side effects is that is that I'm much more accustomed to buying cheaper games on the Xbox Live Arcade. And uh, 
it, it seems like many of the Connect games would fall into that, yeah, I'll spend five bucks for a River Raft game, why not? They're that kind of game. They're not the kind of game you spend $60 for and you get a DVD. Although I would love to see what way they use the, everything that I've seen from Connect so far has been, look, you're not using a controller, look, you're not using right. a controller. I would love to see ways that they integrate it into existing controller-based games. They told us, and I was surprised, because that's exactly the reaction I had, and I think a lot of serious gamers have. Let's say you have a LucasArts Star Wars game, and you've got a lightsaber. Shouldn't you be holding something that has some weight? And they said very clearly, no, there's not going to be any physical objects. The whole point is not to have a physical object. Wow. I guess, uh, you know, I guess it's good that they made a direct decision. Uh, we'll see whether or not it pays off in the long run. Well, there'll, there'll be an aftermarket. Yeah, yeah. The thing that's interesting is that she specifically told me, she said, it knows it's not part of your body. So if you hold a pillow and it sees that, it's not, it's not you're going to act on that. It's not going to, when you throw the pillow away, it's not going to act on that because it knows what, what's part of your body. You know, one thing that Xbox has been really good about is encouraging independent developers to come up with their own little mini games, their own unique uh, takes on things. I'll be really interested to see what bizarre directions the uh, the hacker mod community goes with with uh, a very unique and essentially I mean truly one of a kind new input device. They need some sort of is it XNA the uh, interface yeah. needs yeah. some sort of XNA uh, API for the uh, Connect. That'd be pretty cool. I'm sure that'll come out. We probably won't hear about it here. I wouldn't imagine since this is all uh, consumer focused. Right. So I uh, I wonder uh, uh, if uh, they're going to take advantage of the. Just block, if you block the wire, Lisa, so nobody walks across, I think that's what he was worried about. Um, I, th I think that one of the things they're going to also push is media uh, interaction, interface with it. You like that shot better? That's sunnier. Hey, look at that, we're bright. Good Lord, this, who turned on the lights? <laughs> hey, do we have... I'm a gamer, I... <laughs> If we, could, if we could do a little bit of inside baseball, uh, I believe there's a picture that Lisa took on her phone. Lisa, do you have that picture of Leo from... Wait a minute, wait a minute. These people are about to tell us minutes but then it's about to start so then we gotta can we get, get in for two minutes you guys want to go yeah like can we walk in for two minutes that'd be great let's come on in and then we'll get out of here when it's about to start oh that's great so so we're gonna when it starts we'll throw you back to the studio all right yeah tom merritt sarah lane back there they'll be watching the live stream this is the will turn which is a, cr a great look the psychedelic furs are coming uh, later in the month <laughs> i am by the way i'm going to be tweeting as the news come news comes in uh, offering a little bit of commentary here Here's some of the Cirque du Soleil performers they had last night, kind of the uh, odd uh, uh, fawns that they were talking about. It's fantastic. You know, one thing, Cirque is amazing. Theater. Yeah, this is, uh, they've done an amazing job of really transforming the space. It's a great Art Nouveau theater. We're not allowed to go any further than this. But if you peek through the door, look through the door in there, you can see the stage. We're going to go there live in just a moment. Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane are going to be uh, covering it. We'll be broadcasting the conference live. We're losing the stream as we go inside. Look at that, that's quite amazing. Uh, no slim Xboxes in sight anywhere, do you see him? Uh, there is a black Xbox, I don't see, no. That is that an Elite? No, that's this, yeah, that's the same design that it's got the connect with it. You wanna, you wanna get a shot of this actually? Yeah, what's going on down there here? Can you, are we still streaming? Can you still see us? Wow, this is, the, uh, the Kinect is much larger than I thought it would be. It's bigger than the Wii uh, uh, device because it's got a, an RGB camera in it. It's got a depth sensor. Please don't touch it. Yeah, this is just a painted prototype. <laughs> it's, it's made of foam core and, and wood. It also has, a, uh, I believe, a microphone. You know what's fun? When we were playing the games, it takes pictures of you as you're playing, and then at the end of the game, it sh it's just like a... It mocks you. It mocks you. Yeah. Here's what an idiot you it's, like. it's just like the water slides at Disneyland. Now, you were a little bit skeptical when we talked yesterday about about using uh, Natal slash... I Kinect. thought this is just another eye toy, like on the PS2, and I actually was very impressed when I played with it. It's very responsive. Uh, and, and precise, did you notice? Because that's what I worry about is overcorrection. You know, I don't know, and, and that... The games that they showed, precision was not required. So yes. this will be interesting to see. With a lightsaber, you have to be a little bit more accurate. Now, did you see that? I, I've heard about it, but I wondered, like, what did you? They did not have it in the demo. OK, yeah. They only had the kind of casual game, sports game style demos. We did a little river rafting. There was an obstacle course where you duck, you jump. All right, we're going to get out of here. They're about to start. And we're going to send it back to Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane. They are in, uh, look at this. This is incredible. Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, they are in uh, studio. And uh, as soon as this event begins, they're going to take it back live. Hey, how you doing? And we're getting we're getting flipped off, so to speak. <laughs> so we're going to move out. They gave us a couple of minutes. This is a beautiful Art Deco theater. Really, a gorgeous place to have an event like this. 
but not as over the top as the uh, event last night, we understand. All right. So we're going back out into the light. That was fun. I'm glad we got to actually walk into there. We're going to wrap it up, send it back to the studio, and uh, we're getting ready. We unfortunately don't have the capability of talking to Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane, but I know they're there. Hey, Tom. Hey, Sarah. We really want to thank the folks at uh, uh, with the live view, uh, the unit that we're using, because this really is an amazing unit that allows us to stream live without wires. We also want to thank our friends at Ford and the fantastic Ford Sync. I've been driving with Sync now since last year, and I love it. In fact, every time I get in a car with a different GPS or a different hands-free, I go, this is nothing. Ford Sync's the way to go. With the hands-free calling, the turn-by-turn -turn directions, the amazing control of your media, there's nothing like Ford Sync. I want you to go to your Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury dealer and take a look at Ford Sync or go to the website syncmyridepodcast.com. They've got some great movies and demos there. When you use Sync, you will love it. All right, everybody's inside. We're going to stand off on the street. And Tom and Sarah, we're going to send it back to you in the studio as we begin Microsoft's press conference where we expect they're going to announce, as they did already, Connect, the new Project Natal name, the, uh, the controller that uses your body and a variety of games. We should see some great game uh, trailers for upcoming titles and perhaps a new Xbox Slim. Tom, Sarah, back to you. We'll come back after the press conference with more live from Los Angeles and E3. Back to you. They're wrapping now. Yes. Oh, f What? They, they all have Xboxes. Everyone under their seat got an Xbox. No, you f liar. No, no, You're I such don't. a liar. I'm not lying. That's what they just said. I heard a roar go through the crowd. I can't believe it. They're, they're saying we should be in there. <laughs> Every single person in the auditorium. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. He's punking me, isn't he? You've got He's to be He's such a punk. Me. You're such a good actor. That's a, that's a quick and easy way to buy, to curry some favor. A little There's bit. No way they did that. that that's, that's what I'm hearing, and the crowd is, is, they're not acting like it's a joke. He's punking me. <laughs> He's punking me. I'm with Mr. Scam School. You think I believe a yeah. thing you say, Brian Brushwood? <laughs> it's on your it's on your feed. Oh <laughs> my god. Right All right, they're coming out. And let's see, are they holding Xbox 360s? You liar. We're gonna say no. You're such you a liar. You, you You're punking me. You say you acted like I was a liar, I swear. You're punking me. I don't see any Xbox 360s. Well we'll find out here. We'll ask them. We'll ask them exactly what happened. We're back outside the great beautiful Wintern, what the hell is it called? Wiltern, Wilted Theater. The Wiltern. <laughs> two hours after Microsoft's uh, presentation. Actually, it was only an hour and a half. It just felt like two. And uh, what, what did we see? We saw, we weren't here. We saw nothing. We saw a coffee. Uh, that's right, that's right. But from the feed we saw, we saw Microsoft betting very, very heavily on, on Connect. I was really surprised at how much they hammered on it. Some things, it's very clearly an, an homage to uh, the Nintendo Wii and what made the Wii a success. Uh, they, uh, I, some of the things look like copycats to me, but other things really look better. Their, their workout, their answer to the Wii Fit looks, uh, looks amazing. If you had a uh, hardcore robot commanding you around in the holodeck, uh, I, I think that's what this would be. Uh, on balance, I, I was just really surprised at how much and how how connect centric it was and of course there was a bit of showmanship at the end if we heard correctly uh, that they I don't believe it there's nobody coming out with it with Xbox it's fine, it's fine. let's let's all right we, but speaking of looking good I just want to thank the folks at you lead for making that you lead you live live you take two and speaking <laughs> of looking good I just want to thank the folks at live you for making this possible. We're using their LiveView backpack to stream live without wires from in front of the Wiltern Theater. Also, thanks to our friends at Ford Sync with true hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist, and a whole lot more at your Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury dealers. Ford Sync, you got to try this or visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com for more information. So where is the Xbox Slim? It's mighty slim if they really all got one. Here, let's grab, let's see, let's see who we could grab. Back. All right, let's grab somebody and bring somebody over here who was in there. Uh, and uh, and find out did they get an Xbox Xbox 360? Did they did they actually get a slim? Was it really under their seats? Come here. Let's let's here's it. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. No, we have we're media too. Okay. Hey media. So where is your Xbox Slim? Did you get one? Uh, no, not here with me today. I think they said it was under your seat. 
Oh, uh, well, I missed it then. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. So it wasn't under the seat then, but but they did they did give one to everyone there? That's what they've announced. They just have shipping to everybody today. That is amazing. So that had to be for all the registered attendees. It's not like some hobo came in and just found one under That's why we tried to get in where we refused. That's right. Oh, yeah. If you're a hobo, it's hard to get it shipped to your house. That's right. All right, so what stood out to you? The entire, uh, now we were. First of all, who are, you, who are you and where who are you with? I figured you'd ask that eventually. Chris Morris. I'm with uh, Variety and CNBC. Great to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. So thank you for joining us. Impressed? Uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to have something that's really going to appeal to the mainstream audience this year. Now, would you qualify yourself as a as a hardcore gamer or, or, or even a gamer in general or more of a passive enthusiast? Where do you fall on the gamer spectrum? I think uh, I personally fall in the gamer spectrum on the uh, more on the casual side, but uh, I've been covering it for 15 years and so certainly am familiar with the core titles. So if you're covering it for Variety and CNBC, you're covering an entertainment medium, really. Right, exactly. It's not a technology medium. No, it is very much an entertainment medium. And what was the biggest surprise for you watching the entire presentation? Um, I think the su biggest surprise was that they were actually shipping this new 360 this week. They're doing it that soon is not something that I don't think anyone was expecting. Now, is that the kind of thing that you think a lot of people are chomping at the bit for? People are like, well, I would get an Xbox 360, but it's not black. And it's I'll too tell you, I am, Brian, because one of the reasons I don't use an Xbox 360 in my home theater is it's too damn loud. Not yeah. to mention, it's Red Ring of Death five <laughs> times. And I'm not kidding you. I mean, yeah, they ship me a box, ship it back, but every time it's two or three weeks out. So quieter would be a big deal, wouldn't it, Chris? Quieter would be very good, but, you know, let's we'll have to wait and see on that. They say quieter, but no one has seen it turned on yet. Much bigger hard drive, and that's, I guess, part of their strategy to really start selling you media via the Zoom marketplace. Very much so, and hard drives are cheaper now, so they can afford to do this without raising their costs. So, uh, to, uh, obviously, they pushed Connect very, very hard. Does that make a difference to you? Is that something that you're interested in, or did, does it look like a, a, a novelty that's going to wear off? I think it's something that, uh, it's not going to be a novelty that wears off. It's something that's meant to, bring, meant to bring in a whole new audience, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring in some of the audience that Nintendo has gotten over the past few years. Awesome. Well, we actually have to represent more of that. Thank you very much, Chris. Chris, it's great to meet you. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank Take you. care. Yeah, yeah. To give us some of the hardcore gamer perspective, we're actually joined from, by, from the Totally Rad Show, Mr. Jeff Kanata. Hey, it's great to meet you finally, Jeff. Yes. So we have been sitting outside in the coffee shop. We didn't get a free Xbox. Slim. I know. I'm, I'm glad that they bought my love a little bit. Uh, and, and Money had it myself. And do you feel like a cheap $2 whore? Uh, a little bit, but I usually feel that way. So all right. That's I'm, all, I'm all right. Uh, so what did we see? We saw a lot of game trailers, stuff we expected, Halo Reach, uh, you know, uh, at Gears of War 18, whatever it is. In a large sense, Microsoft asked, hey, do you like stuff that you already like? Then you'll like it more. You'll like more of that. And then they showed uh, Connect, a lot of Connect stuff. What now, I like Connect. I have to say, now I played with it uh, earlier this morning, and at, at you know when I first saw it last year with Veronica fiddling, fiddling with it, and then uh, you know later saw the videos. I thought it's a Wii knockoff. It's not that impressive. It's not something a gamer is going to enjoy. It is aimed at a casual gamer in the family, obviously. Yeah, they're definitely taking on the Wii head on. What excites me is some of the stuff they showed with Forza that hints at some of the applications that I think we will see with it going forward. I'm not so excited about the, the Wii Sports knockoff. I am excited about the head tracking they showed in Forza. I think that kind of thing, moving forward and putting that into more hardcore experiences, really can be a new type of gaming experience. I mean, if I can use my racing wheel along with Kinect, if Kinect can add new functionality alongside a controller, I think that is extremely exciting. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things I was excited about too, but we're not hearing any of that. We're hearing whenever they say connect, it's always followed by with no controller at all. Right. In fact, that's what Microsoft told me this morning is that it's not going to use controllers. It's not going to use a fake lightsaber. It may not use a steering wheel. Now, it knows that the steering wheel is not part of you, so maybe you can use it, it will ignore it, it'll watch your hands and it'll have the same effect, I don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping so. They showed Forza playing with no steering wheel, but I own a racing wheel. I, I, that is a more realistic experience. Well, and you want the force feedback, which of course, Connect does not give you. Exactly, but, but if it'll give me head tracking, if I can turn my head and it lets me look out the side window, that's extremely exciting, and, and that's the kind of thing that I think going forward can be cool. I also think the uh, Your Shape from Ubisoft yes. That is as close to a killer app, I think, 
that they showed. That, that is the moment I stopped laughing. I was watching all the demos, and I was like, well, this looks awfully familiar. And then and then that app came up, and I was- Better than Wii Fit. Oh, dude, by a million miles. I mean, it is, it is the one app that's demonstrably better than what the Wii offers, because standing on a balance board is one thing. No, come here. Be, come on, join us. It's so good to see you. Oh, and yes, I never see him. My anymore. boss. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a wicked job. Thank you. So, what did you think? Uh, I thought there was a lot to enjoy and appreciate in there. I thought there were some amazing visuals in the Connect stuff, but I, I, I really think we don't have enough room in our living rooms to, to jump around. To jump around and to have all that physical space. Yeah. The dancing one from Harmonix looked really cool, though. I, I mean, every time I play any of these music games, I always go, why don't they have some kind of a dancing thing in them? Because we all move, right? I want, I want to learn the thriller choreography. If they can give me the thriller choreography, I'm in. All right, try this. Let's just try this. <laughs> yeah, it's there you go. Well, Leo already well, knows it, evidently. Do we have to do the zombies? <laughs> That's what See, that wasn't so hard. Yeah, it's true. You, you're you're really, good. really talented. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you since Vancouver. Good. Things are going great. Here we are, standing out in front of uh, the Wiltern Theater. What could be better? So, I, I would not be surprised at all in the dancing game if you had down, downloadable choreography the same way that Rock Band adds different uh, uh, different songs from time to time. You'd be able to, as, you know, new, as new videos come out, yeah. you'd be able to match the choreography in them. Yeah, yeah they're going to they're gonna figure out ways to get our money for sure. <laughs> they're very smart. Well, now when you talk games on the run, you'll be uh, really be running. Yeah, we'll be running, yeah. Which is, I mean, I think this movement to physical activity, we need it. It's about time. We need it. I have to say, it looked good, and it said, they said if you do a yoga pose and it's a little bit off, it won't let you continue on until your yoga pose actually looks right to the camera. Yeah. And that, that is better than a balance board. A balance board can just check your distribution of weight. This is actually, it's as if, you know, all those old 80s uh, fitness videos. Yeah, they're, they're done. It, yeah. If you have that, but you have something actually looking at you as well, yeah. that is a good thing. That I think is that's the most important thing. The statistical tracking, the, that immediate information that you're getting back, that's valuable information. That's like having a personal trainer yeah. sitting in your room giving you all this, the feedback. It's good. If it works. I would imagine also that there'll be a randomizing element to it. You'll never have the exact same workout twice in a row because that's the problem a lot of people get burnt out. When you do even like uh, uh, the acclaimed workouts like the P90X, you know, around the eighth time you're like, you know what's coming up and you get bored of it. If it can keep it fresh and keep you going, I would imagine you get better results. I'm surprised they haven't licensed that because I think dudes would be more interested in uh, something catered to them, like the 300 workout or something. Yeah. And then the, the women in the household would be like, yeah, I want you to have ab abs like that. So you go ahead and buy your Xbox and your, and your uh, con what is it, connect? connect? And your connect and start working out so you can look like uh, You should mix uh, Gears of War and a workout. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Then you'd have yeah. Some fun. yeah, I think the, the tech is very impressive. I mean, just seeing that, that workout video with the, with the sort of Purple block. Well, compare this to iToy. You've been around long enough to have played with iToy. iToy wasn't very responsive. It wasn't smart enough to know that's your head, that's your hand. This is a, a, a huge leap forward. It's 10 years later. Uh, technically, it's incredible. I just worry that it's such a uh, it's it's such a commitment in a living space. You know, like to talk to your machine and and you know make room to move around and stuff and i don't know if every uh, apartment and household is going to be ready for that what we also don't know is how much of a commitment price wise it is they haven't said the price they didn't give the price they also haven't said whether it's bundled with a game as the Wii is is there going to be a connect sports bundled or a connectimals bundled or what is that called connectimals yeah that, that really is the name it really is i thought name. i made a mistake did you like because now we have connectimals yeah. and you know that little kid petting the lion that kind of scared me yeah, I, I tweeted about the furries are going to be happy, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is a clean podcast. Sorry, sir. sorry. Uh, you, uh, you, you've got to. Um, I wonder if if there's a couple of ways I think Connect can really work for regular gamers. First of all, a lot of us are getting older and we have kids of our own, yeah. and uh, you know I'm I consider myself a hardcore gamer, so of course I'm I'm all in with the Xbox. Uh, but now uh, you know I can see getting this just to give my daughter something to play with and and to, to play along with her, but. It also has the ability not only to appeal to, to kids in the younger demographic, but I have a feeling that once we're on the show floor and we're actually doing minority report manipulation, I think that will really appeal to the hardcore crowd. I'm, I'm much more excited about the voice recognition yeah. than I am about it's the like motion. 2001 mixed with minority report. Yeah. Oh, but man, we've seen voice recognition. It never works. It's always frustrating. It's, I get, I get so, uh, I see the guy saying, Xbox 
stop. And I go, oh, Please. no, oh, no. Please stop. Why aren't you stopping? Please. They, they needed to bring up some different accents up there, too, to make it sort of feel like it's going to be internationally accepted. One thing that I would say about this Stealth Bomber Xbox that's come out, which looks awesome, and I can't believe they gave us one today. It looks got, incredible. Yeah, I know. We totally got Oprah. I know. it's it's. I, we were standing outside. We were saying, I don't want to go in. I thought he was punking me. I don't want to go in. But here's the thing. I think the Wii has penetrated into as many households as it has. I think women make a lot of purchasing decisions. They looked at that cute little white platform with the tiny footprint, and they said, Dad, that'll be okay in our in our living room. I don't know if they're going to feel that uh, warm to uh, uh, something that looks like a Cylon radar. It's looking at you and the little red eye. And did, did they show anything that makes somebody who owns a Wii go, this is better? Uh, I didn't see anything. No, just in HD. Just now, different. now if Nintendo comes out tomorrow and says, here's your Wii HD, and it has a, equivalent looking software, I think we're going to have an interesting schoolyard. Well, and Sony now has the motion, will have the motion sticks too. So this is a level playing field as far as that goes. Yeah, and Sony has Kratos. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they... Uh, I, sense what they that, I sense that Sony's motion is going to be aimed more at gamers. me. Yeah. 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 And I, it'll be less about these kind of sports, Wii Sports mini games, I hope. Yeah. I, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I have to say, I, 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 enjoy, I got the Wii, played it for a month. It was a novelty. Stopped playing it. I'm a little worried the Kinect is going to be a little bit like that, where it's really fun. And they go, okay, I get it, I'm done. They're going to have to come up with new stuff all the time. Well, it yeah. requires everyone to think out of the box. All the developers, all of the, the sales guys that get it to the to market, and then all of us players. We all have to think about video games in a totally different way. That's a big ask. And there's going to have to be a lot of education. I mean, this is just the tip of it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Plug your latest shows. What are you up to these days? We're still we're reviews on the run every day. Jeff's on it every day, which yes. is awesome reviewing uh, Blu-rays with Miri and Electric Playgrounds on every day and you can find them online so thank you uh, Electric Playground and reviews on the run so it's great it's so good to see you Greedy Productions have a great day yeah, man. so um, I guess the big question is uh, what did we not see during the during the presentation that's what I wanted to ask there anything you expected that you didn't see Jeff well, I was hoping for some new IPs I'm surprised they didn't show Crackdown 2 at all yeah um, what else I, I really wanted something shown with Kinect that wasn't just another Wii type game, and they didn't show that at all. No, I, I actually, I did feel that for the video chat moment. I thought the video chat was very well handled outside of the horribly stilted conversation they were having. Yeah. But I love the fact that the, the, the facial tracking as you leaned over one way or the other, uh, and um, uh, I could see, I could see. Um, that being Microsoft's strength. Microsoft has always owned the online community aspect between the three big consoles, and if they play to those strengths and say Connect is an important and integral part of your online experience with your friends, then I can see it going somewhere. But just playing copycat to the Nintendo Wii, I don't think is going to work out for them. Yeah. I mean, they literally showed a number of sequels, and then they went to Connect, and that was the whole show. <laughs> Connect was a sequel in and of itself, of sorts, to, to what we already saw with the Wii. Jeff Kanata, it's so great to meet you finally after all this time. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a blast, yeah. We'll get you on Twitter real soon. Fantastic. All right. Yeah, you got it, man. We are standing out front of the Will Turn Theater where Microsoft has just wrapped up its press conference. E3 is about to get underway here in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Uh, Sony has a press conference coming up tomorrow. Nintendo is also tomorrow. Uh, any Actually, before we do that, let me let me say a couple of things. First, thank the folks at uh, Live U for making this possible, and for Ford for making this possible. Have you driven yet in my Mustang? I have not. I'm looking forward to the opportunity. I, When's I, that going to happen? Next time you're in uh, Petaluma, please come for a ride. I took Tom Merritt for a ride with me. I wanted to show him the Ford Sync. I did, it I is did incredible. I did, I did oogle it from afar. I'll tell you, Ford is back, baby. The Mustang is back, but with the Fusion, the Fiesta, the whole line of Ford, and all the Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles that now have this new Ford Sync, the new generation, amazing, true hands-free dialing, even on the Android, you know. By the way, that was one thing. I, I was almost surprised that you weren't like, uh, when Connect announced all the voice controls, you're like, big deal. I've had that for a while. Things had it forever. Well, you know, uh, Android does not have voice dialing built into it, but with Ford Sync, it works. It doesn't work with a lot of other Bluetooth. It works with the iPhone, works with every phone. Some phones you can even, it'll even read text messages back to you. It's got turn-by-turn -turn directions. It'll even route you around traffic problems, so you never get stuck in traffic. And here in LA, that's a very valuable thing to have. 911 assists if something bad happened for you, and a whole lot more. You can find out more by going to your favorite Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury dealer. There's one just down the road. Say, I want to see the Ford Sync. 
help them out. You know, American made, good cars from Detroit. Detroit Iron, baby. You can also go to SyncMyRidePodcast.com to find out more. I love it because it's an American car company working with Microsoft to take the lead in technology and automobiles. I just love seeing that. <laughs> you wear your big cowboy hat. I love it. USA number one. My wife has a Toyota, and I have to say, I get in there and I look at it. I mean, I know Ford doesn't want me to say this, but it's true. It sucks compared to the sink. It sucks compared to the sink. Don't hold back. Tell us what I'm you're not telling the truth. <laughs> so now, every one of you was going to look under your seat right now. You'll find a Ford sink. <laughs> I don't oh, think I can do that. Right no, I don't think There's you can. There's a Mustang right under your seat right now. We should also take a moment. We can go inside. So let's go inside the Wiltern Theater and we uh, maybe we can. take a moment to thank uh, G4 for allowing us to stream. During That's the great. In fact, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for G4. G4 has an exclusive on the show floor, and uh, they very kindly have allowed us to stream. So we'll be broadcasting from the E3 show floor, which is always a great time. Tomorrow, from noon to about 2.30, right up to Tom Merritt and TNT. So uh, do tune in for that live stream stream from the show floor. It's going to be a lot of fun. And of course now we go into the lobby once again of the Wiltern Theater where they're demonstrating all of these uh, uh, devices and I would like to get a close-up, see if you can Brian, of the Slim. I really want to see and hold the Slim. So they have, they have the Slims now. You know what, I wonder, I have to think that perhaps what was inside that Xbox 360 that was we looked at when we came here earlier, maybe they opened that up and inside was a slim just as they did on stage. There it is, that's the new Xbox 360, 250 megabyte, I'm sorry, gigabyte hard drive. They say it's much quieter, that's huge. It also uh, is about the same price as the existing, oh, careful, <laughs> I just had to pass the microphone around. Of course, it's got the, um, it's got the Kinect attached to it. That's the Kinect camera, the RGB camera, the Z-axis camera, and the, uh, set, and the microphone pickup on that thing. That's quite beautiful. Uh, you know, when you look at it head on, I actually wasn't sure if I was seeing the new one or not because I didn't have much uh, size to, to base it, it on. But from the side, you could clearly see the difference in the design. It's also uh, kind of angular. I mean, I like the, it's very interesting. You know, it's a little bit surprising because they worked so hard to make the Xbox marketing very uh, subtle. Uh, originally, when the Xbox 360 came out, they went with the white design because they knew that that would appeal more to uh, uh, to the Japanese market, where the Xbox traditionally did not do well. But the uh, but in this case, it looks like they're going back to the stark black. This looks a lot more like the original Xbox One in the aesthetics. It's piano black too, which is kind of nice. It's shiny. Oh, I almost got arrested. So. Uh, matte, it looks like a mostly matte finish, but very shiny on the side. I won't touch it, sir, don't worry. And, uh, and uh, I guess it has a lot more cooling because you see vents on the top and vents on, uh, on the right side of it. So that's probably very important. Yeah, I would imagine that the airflow design is a lot better, but I, 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 I'm with you. I want to actually hear it in action. To, I mean, they say yeah, whisper, whisper sign. I'd like to hear that. You know, it, my guess is uh, certainly there are some fans in there, I'm sure, but uh, wouldn't it be neat if it actually had, like, you know, just some radiators to where it didn't need any kind of active cooling on there. Well, it also has Wi-Fi, which is huge. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I added the Wi-Fi to my Xbox 360. PS3 has Wi-Fi. Right. Nintendo has Wi-Fi. Why don't you, you know, build in the Wi-Fi for crying out loud? And not, not only Wi-Fi. That shows the age of the Xbox 360 platform. Well, no, yeah, absolutely. And uh, keep in mind, not only is it Wi-Fi, but it's but it's wireless N. So it's, it's, it's faster Fast. Wi-Fi, exactly. Uh, and I got to tell you, I, I begrudgingly bought my Wi-Fi adapter for the, for the Xbox because I, I didn't, it, it was awfully expensive at $99. It's outrageous. And to leave that uh, built in right from the get-go is certainly a welcome turn of events. Let's say hi, Cedric Ingrand is here. He's from Planet Cren, my favorite Frenchie. It's good to see you. How are good you, Cedric? Good to see you, Leo. So you came out for this? Of course, it's it's usually my favorite conference of the three. Now we have to see what Nintendo has in store this year. It might be huge, and you can always always expect a surprise from Sony. But this was good. You were in the room. I wasn't. So you got an Xbox 360 Slim. I did not. You're all getting a new car. <laughs> that was cool. I mean, it didn't cost them much because most of the people in there were press, and they were all getting. They were going to get one anyway. Yeah, anyway. But it was a nice it was a nice moment. So what was your favorite moment today? Possibly the uh, Hideo Kojima game that we'll, we'll be using Kinect, that Saber, I mean, it's going to be awesome. You have to see the footage. Uh, other than that, uh, it seems, you know, that they, they, they were suffering from Nintendo Envy. You know, we need our dancing game, we need our fitness game, we need our sports game using Kinect, we need our, our, our petting game, and, um, and now they'll get that. So this was probably what, what was missing from the lineup. Xbox was always the more gamer-oriented console out there. 
Well, that's interesting, isn't it? And Microsoft's going after a more consumer audience now. This is supposedly quieter. It looks prettier on the it shelf. It's pretty, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it, it looks actually small. I hope it'll be quieter. Really? Yeah, we're all saying that. <laughs> yeah, and I hope it won't die on you after a few weeks. I don't see any room for a red ring of death. Actually, this is one of the things. This is one of the things that Brian said they were up to is they wanted to redesign it just because the association of that Xbox beige front piece with the red ring of death was so close <laughs> that they just said we got to do something different. Kinect looked looks a little bigger than I would have expected, and the one missing piece of the puzzle is we still don't know how much it'll cost. Right, or availability outside the U.S. Um, yeah, you, you would have to re-pass that phrase, you know, available worldwide starting November 8th in the U.S., uh, but I guess we'll know more as, as, the week, as the week develops. But I would have liked to know, is it 100 bucks? Is it, is it $50? No, no. Is it's it, got to be more, right? I, I would say the sweet spot would be 99 I don't think it's going to be 99 I think we've kind of reached consensus 150 Yeah, something like that. So, um, oh, by the way, uh, you're, com you're coming to Paris. This I am, for Le Web. Are you, going to be, are you going to be there December 8th, 9th? I meet your partner. I'll, I'm all over it. We'll, How could you miss it? You will be, we'll do great stuff there. I want to see the Plenacren Studios, too. You'll, you'll come there. There's a speaker's dinner at TF1 the night before. Fantastic. Sorry, we're sorting out personal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> see you there, Gigren. It's so nice to see you again, see you again. from Plenacren. We'll see you around the conference. Take care, TF1, Paris, France. I like saying that. Isn't that fun? So uh, what else is going on uh, here? One, one thing about the Connect, and I suspect it's the same as the screen on the iPad or the screen on the iPhone. I suspect it's got to be the kind of thing that you actually get hands on. I know you already got to play Connect earlier. And it did make a difference. You're exactly right. In fact, it reminded me a lot of that iPad experience when nobody would believe me that this is really cool. Because we held it, we knew the difference. And I think because I played it, I really, it's, it's, there's a couple of things. It's, it's actually very analogous to the iPad. The iPad was much snappier than you realized by looking at pictures. When, when you got it in real life, it just was very snappy. Same thing uh, with Connect. It's responsive, and that's important. There can be no lag. Yeah, if it's responsive and it's precise, and you know, that's one of the things when the Wii first came out, everybody's like, oh, look at you, you look like a fool, bouncing all around, throwing your arms every which way. But then you actually started playing it, and it was an un unmitigated success. I really am looking forward to actually playing the games on the showroom floor, because I suspect that will definitely color my opinion. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe you and I, we could play a little bit. Uh, we could have a, we could have a dance off, play the dancing game. That'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know which of us would look more awkward or more whites. Well, that is one of the things that happens. You are awkward when you play these, but who cares? You're having fun. That's the other thing is I would never think to uh, you know take dance lessons and go out in public and let people look at me you know look like an idiot. But in the privacy of my own room, I might actually I might I mean I played a heck of a lot of Dance Dance Revolution back in the day. It's kind of like that. Yeah, except for you know this time you actually learn how to dance. Right. And it is direct drive in the sense that when you move, it moves. You know, it, it, I think sometimes uh, in the early days of computing, the mouse, the idea that you move something here and a pointer moves on the screen, took a little while for people to get. I think you're going to see some of the same, a little bit of a struggle with Connect, but boy, it didn't take me long before I realized if I do this, that character on the screen does that. And, and, and my son Henry said this, you actually become that character on the screen. There is a, an immersive sense that happens. When I was going down that river raft, uh, I almost felt wet. There is an immersive sense that happens because it mirrors you so closely. Now, there's one aspect that we haven't talked about so far. Is I'm, I was surprised over Twitter, watching the responses, how many people were talking about, oh, their wife is going to love this. And it makes me think, you know, my wife loves to dance, and I, I don't because I feel awkward and stupid, but that I, I love video games, and this could be the type of thing that allows... Uh, it could bring you two together. You know, it, could, it could bring the rest of the family into the Xbox experience. Do you think now, speaking as a serious gamer, that this is going to tarnish the Xbox, because the Xbox really has been a serious gaming platform, unlike the Nintendo Wii. Serious gamers have looked down their noses at the Nintendo Wii. Could this hurt the Xbox? I, absolutely. This is a bold move on Xbox's part, because branding makes a difference. Brands mean things. PS3 has an opportunity, in other words. Sony has an opportunity here. Sony has an opportunity to say no cutesy, cartoon characters, no copycats. It's too late, they did those stupid me characters yes. that look just like the Wii. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Xbox is very much going into, and, and they're not, I don't think they're pretending otherwise. I mean, they're very much bringing a very Wii-like experience to the Xbox, but the problem is most of the people who are into that kind of experience already own a Wii. And so I don't know, I don't know if this is a winning move for Xbox to try to follow in that 
Me Too lineup. There, this could be the year that PS3 is able to position itself as like, well, guess what? We're the, we are the, the real gamers game. Call. It's kind of a chess game, and Microsoft has made the first move now. It's your move, Sony and Nintendo. We've got to see what they respond with uh, later today and tomorrow. We're going to come back, Brian and I, to cover E3 live from the show floor. We'll start at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's, uh, uh, let's see, 1900 UTC at live.twit.tv. We'll go for a couple of hours, go right up to TNT time with Tom Merritt and Becky Worley. Um, I'm excited about seeing the show floor. I haven't been on the show floor at E3 in 10 years. Uh, it hasn't been quite that long for me, but I have nothing but fond memories of every time I've come before. And I love, I love the fact that E3 is back. It's big, it's loud, it's, it is. it's out of control. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. No more airplane hangers. They're back on the, on a, in a conference center. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, we're going to send it back to the studio now. Uh, well, before we do, I should mention Ford one more time. I really do want to thank Ford. They made this all possible with the incredible Ford Sync. That's true hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist, and more. You can find out more at your Ford Lincoln or Mercury dealer or go to SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Thanks also to Live View for our Live View backpack. We love this. It's amazing. We're wandering around. Everybody else is taping. We're live here at the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles. Brian Brushwood, yes, go sir. to schwood.com. You got it, yeah. And I'll be tweeting, of course, from the showroom floor as the, as the stories break. If you want to follow me at schwood, that's S-H-W-O-O-D on Twitter. And, of course, Scam School and uh, NSFW on the Twit Network. Yes, sir. How did it go last night? You know, we actually did a simulation. We had a simulation run to prep me for this E3 experience. We, uh, it was pretty fun. You'll I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you can find it twit.tv slash NSFW or on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit. In fact, we have posted on YouTube, and I encourage you to take a look. Becky and I this morning at 5.30 a.m. actually played with Connect. We did that river rafting game and an obstacle course, and that's where I really got a sense of what Connect can do, and I think it's a pretty interesting video. Go to YouTube and watch that. It's youtube.com slash twit. Twit. Yeah, and it is worth it to watch you do it because whenever you see the Microsoft demos, you know these are people who are trained. I've never used it. it. But you're, you're a real guy who went in there and just jumped in feet first. Yeah. So <laughs> and belly last. Thanks, everybody. We send it back now to the studio. We will actually rerun that segment from this morning and our coverage from E3. And then in, uh, coming up at 1.30, it's Home Theater Geeks. That's 1.30 uh, Pacific time, uh, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on live.twit.tv. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to John uh, Slanina back in the studio who got up very early in the morning. Ken Shepardson, our director of engineering. Who else should we thank? Lisa Kensell, who did the uh, yeoman-like duty of uh, producing this at the Sarah. last minute. Tom, Tom and, and Sarah, Sarah providing commentary throughout the entire I was enjoying that. No, it was very good. Very, very good. funny. And behind the camera, that's Eric Lanigan who's doing another great job keeping an eye on things. He'll be doing all the editing too of our show. Uh, so you can also watch this on the Twit Specials feed at twit.tv. Thanks everybody. Back to the Twit Cottage. Bye-bye. Doing the Twit. Doing the Twit.